our new album is called Change or Just Continue. It'll be released on September 23rd, 2014 at approximately midnight on iTunes, <laughs> CD Baby. It'll be in the Gallery of Sound. And we're working on getting it in Best Buy and Walmart. Uh, the Anthracite Theater at Leonard's, I believe it's going to be called. Uh, the room is gigantic. It's unreal. Like, the building's unreal. Uh, we're, I'm beyond excited to do it there. Balcony you know, and the whole nine. What's that? The balcony and the whole oh, yeah, nine. Oh, yeah. No, it's like, yeah. in Scranton, you're kind of, you're, you're, you're looking like at the cool thinking you're going to go ahead and have to oh, play kinda, yeah. a bar with the fifth 300, <laughs> 400 that's people. That's and, awesome. you know, that wouldn't be a problem. We have a great, you know working uh relationship with a lot of the bars we play but i mean this is one of those where you can get maybe 1500 people in a room to see your show like and i know they're planning on doing some cool shit there so it's it's a really cool thing for us to be able to do our series party there i don't know if they're going to be completely opened at that point but i know they're basically trying to get it ready and get everything moving to get bring in big acts and concerts and all that stuff Okay. It doesn't no. happen around here anymore. No, no, no. <laughs> that doesn't happen. Not no. at all. Well, let's bring that up. Like the scene in this area. What do you think of uh, basically what you just said? But you know, if you want to touch more on it, how you know, just ten years ago there were so many venues and <laughs> that played a lot. You know, that that catered to a lot of original music, and you don't see that anywhere near as often anymore. I believe the scene is still very greatly alive um the only problem it just really, I don't it say, seems hidden underground yeah, almost yeah i mean i don't even want to say it's a problem is that you lost bigger bars because no one started going but you yeah. still have smaller bars that people go to if you're a good band you're packing yeah if you're a good band and you go out and you promote yourself well and you market yourself you'll bring people out to your show it's just a matter of the scene isn't dead the scene has changed there's different yeah. types of music you can find. Some people enjoy DJs. Some people enjoy, you know, indie rock. You know, like an S. Dakota, blinded passenger type. And then there's some people that enjoy, like, going to the V-Spot. Because you know you're going to get an awesome rock band just about every weekend. Yeah, rock or metal. Yeah, yeah. rock or metal. And Vinny's going to bring it, and it's going to be awesome. But, I mean, there's some bars that you can go to that you know, this is my style I'm going to hear. I mean, you go to the bog, you can expect to hear some sort of indie country fusion like a cabinet or whatever like bluegrass and if that's your style you can go there every night of the week but if you're into metal you can go to the v spot you know what i mean like the bars are still there to play no as bands you're not going to make two thousand yeah, dollars like all these people at the yeah door all the stories i've heard about the early 90s when oh well i went in with contracts where i was getting 1500 not gonna fucking happen anymore you know what i mean but the goal isn't to go ahead and for us is not to be you know i don't want to say stuck in scranton because it has this area has been great to us um, but I mean, the goal is not to be in Scranton. It is to go ahead and the last place to land on a tour is home after you've been <laughs> all over the world. Um, but I mean, as far as the scene, I would not say it's dead I, I, at all. I, I do believe the scene around here is very good. Um, a lot of bands are still friends. You know what I mean? It's just not, it isn't 2005. It's not 1999. It's 2014 and people were for the last couple of years still trying to figure it out. But now it's still here you know what i mean you know 150 people as compared to a thousand people is a good night so i mean yeah i, I still believe the scenes and i think good. like everyone being friends is kind of like why it has changed mm -hmm. is because those smaller bars are the ones that are taking care of you mm -hmm. that you know you're not going to get ripped off you know they're going to yeah. promote it because they want they're small and they want to <laughs> succeed just as bad as you do and they actually get to know you and appreciate what you're doing for their business as opposed to the huge places that's stopping and go. They just hand you, yeah, go. they hand yeah. you a pile of tickets. Yeah. So these is your money. Yeah. I mean, so the whole ticket sales thing for bands, and I mean, for our CD release party, we're going to do it, but it's not to go ahead and rob anybody. Like, it's our CD release, so we're going to be pushing the tickets. It, you know what I mean? Like, it's going to be a $10 ticket to go see such a, a big show for us in such a big room. And I, I also believe that after all the years, like, we've been... I mean, I was in a previous band, but I was still with you guys. Yeah, absolutely. After for the past like 10, 12, even years, like I think we we owe it to us to play a room like that mm -hmm. and host it and you know 
try to make something. Yeah, because you guys were already you know like mean? out when that scene was huge, and we were just starting. Yeah. You know what I mean like, but I, like, there there still is an appreciation for talent. Oh yeah. People don't. If you're a good band, people will come see you. If you're a shitty band and you have friends. Your friends will come see you for the first couple months, and then your friends won't give a fuck about how good or bad you are. They're going to look at you and go, oh, I couldn't make it tonight. But your friends are your friends. They're not going to say, holy fuck, your band sucks. Your friends are going to go ahead and go, oh, I, I went to a different bar. Sorry. Oh, we had plans. My friends did it. We, we did it. We were a shitty band when we first started. We were a fucking awful band. When we first started, we played Shakers. We had about 650 people for our first show. And the next one had 400 we drank way too much, we drank and but I mean like the band as a whole, like we were kids. I mean I was twenty one. No, we was, was like sixteen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but like she had to have her mom there. Yeah. Shit. We were a bad band, and like, but it at the packed time because they, they knew they, they, yeah. our old drummer and our old bass player knew everybody. They knew so many people, and it helped us get the name out there, which we're thankful for. But we were a shitty band, <laughs> and over the eight years we've been together, we've absolutely honed in on becoming the name and getting the name out there and it really came about when we put our original music out right um in 2008 when we dropped a basement in laughing which was like a little six song ep um it really lit a good fire for us because with all the bands that were around like there was panacea and like syphilis and hour after and less and wands i mean the scene was 12 of them. the scene was incredible and they would always be like yeah come on out and play they all knew who we were before it because everybody was waiting for it but i mean a lot of bands go out and they do their album and it's like, no, we don't want pre-production. We just want to do our album and, you know, it, it's the art of it and it's all that. Like, you're an absolute asshole if you don't get a fourth, a different ear on your music. Right. Because you're just going to push shitty music out. And there's some people that produce and do their music and it's them and that's great. But, I mean, when you're first starting, like in 2008, we didn't know how to write a fucking... We had 70 parts to a song and it was like, yeah. this is awesome. And then the person comes in and goes, what the fuck did I just hear? Yeah. And you're like, what? <laughs> we thought that set, was great. That's not a song. Yeah. You know, that's not a song. There's no chorus. Well, this is the chorus. That's not the chorus. Definitely you know I mean? needed a lot of help on the first one. Like, yeah. I would say half as much as the second one and then this one. Yeah, this one. This one we yeah. practically wrote ourselves. Not, and, not to mention, and, going through that process also makes you a better songwriter alone because it, you train yourself how to write differently yeah. yeah but i mean like we got to work with brett alexander for all three all the albums we oh, put out we yeah. work with brett and brett he <laughs> just gets us too. you know like he worked with lemon jelly i mean and it's just it was incredible because he kind of just at first he's not the guy that pussyfoots around and he's like oh try that again mm. no it's like that was fucking awful like he'd tell me and like I'm an abrasive guy. I'm like, well, shit, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and he'd be like, you know, we're not painting our moires. We're making rock music. If you can go back in and do that again, we'd appreciate it. I was like, oh, all right, <laughs> well, thanks. Well, we also kind of like pre pre produced it ourselves before yeah. we even went to him. So we because we knew yeah. how to right. after all the years. Yeah. Right. But I mean, like the recording. You didn't have to rely on somebody to help you write he didn't three really more change. parts. He didn't first. change much at all. No, no, no. There was like four or five songs where he came down, listened to it twice, and was like, I'm not touching okay, that. Okay, so, well, like what you were saying before about, you know, if you're a shitty band, you're, you're going to lose your following and stuff like that. One of the one of the things, and I think one of our first major long conversations on Facebook with uh, between me and Grant was about the cover versus original thing. You guys have struck a nice blend there where you dropped your originals in to the set over yeah. the time, and now, like... At, at the CD release party, will it be all? It'll be all originals. All I originals. Are you making that move now to go all original? No. You'll I mean, still play covers. Local, when you're local, I mean, people come to see you play that stuff. Mm -hmm. We can still get away with playing 15 to 16 originals though. All right. But I mean, you have to throw in your Rage Against the Machines and all that, and people get dancing, and drunk, sloppy. You know what I mean? They Especially enjoy. Especially when you're playing a four-hour show. Yeah. And you yeah. also got to realize you got for a lot of places around here, you're not getting paid to play original. Yeah, like you paying. have to cater to like you know the crowd and the whole nine. There's certain places, but let alone to hook them in. You yeah, have yeah. To, yeah. Oh, yeah, you gotta throw the shit in there, definitely. Have them stick around so they're not. Well, I don't know this song. Oh, I don't know this song. Yeah, Let's I'm get out. Go grab a beer. Yeah. Yeah, my friends. Yeah. But it does help that we could pl go out and play like forty. Right, you play like three rage, even and the, then rage yeah. is a good hook. Yeah. Play two rage songs and then you throw an original and they're like, oh. Yeah. Before the CD release party, it's pretty much going to be all original. We'll probably have a couple bands open the night, but I mean, it's going to be our music. I mean, that's what we're doing. We run ahead and like, there's, we didn't, there's some songs we haven't played in years of our own. 
and we went ahead and we relearned them and it was like wow i, for, I forgot about that right you know what i mean but we went ahead and we relearned the our first catalog. two cds yeah every single yeah. song we so, wrote I mean, we have 32 songs to go out and play which is so for the awesome. first time we can go out and play a three-hour original show like a legit concert now yeah. I, right we plan which on making, that was never able to happen we plan on playing and i like we're bruce springsteen or pros jam like we're going out and we're playing to yeah. play None if of you want to stick around minutes, that shit. yeah if you want to stick around yeah. stick around if you don't well we're still gonna play you know what i mean like it's not people are paying to see us and be there we want to put on the best show we can i don't want it to be what do we play an hour and five minutes okay we're done like no we want it to be like we have all these songs to play. Let's play them. You, know yeah. I mean? it's, you don't want to go be going to too. Like, it's our release party. So, I mean, people do work and some people, people do yeah, burn some up. people don't want it. Yeah, people get hammered. They're not going to want to stick around until 2 in the morning. You know, they kind of want... After, if you want to, like, hang, like go to, for, like, signing things. Yeah, and hang out and just be, tell everybody thank you. Because, I mean, that's... <laughs> kind of want to you know right. i see your release party you want right. to say thank you hey, for we're being finished. here let's get out of here yeah no it's not gonna be like <laughs> yeah. pack up pack the shit as soon as the last song's <laughs> the over they fuck out of everyone here. out yeah because it's uh, two yeah but i mean like we're gonna be done i think it's gonna be we're trying for midnight if it starts at like eight i think we're gonna go eight o'clock because hey, you want to treat it like a concert you know what i mean you don't want to treat it like a bar gig you want to treat it like or even like 7 30 first bang yeah, go on this is a concert stick around right. you know what i mean like not some bullshit, oh, here's the first set, here's the second set, here's the third set. Like, no, it's going to be... Oh, it's not going on until 10. Yeah, like, we're going like to make sure we all yeah. go take a pee before we start, because we're going to be up there for a long-ass time. That's cool. Um, Now, you said uh, you worked with Fred Alexander on um, the production of these. Yes. Um, Your writing process, you said you brought you brought everything to him pretty close to finish. We what what is... We what? I was just say we spent a lot of time like sitting on some of them and figuring out like different parts and like doing it before he even came down. Right. So that it would cut the time in half. Number one, you're cutting time in half. Number two, you're saving money. And it just makes it easier. Put it this way, for the first CD, there were some times where we were down here doing pre-production four hours on every single song. Right. This... CD, I don't think we spend more than like 40 minutes on any one song. Play it maybe two, three times. Two, three then. times tops. I mean, the only song I remember changing was Fight. Because we kind of had like a more riff, a catchy chorus, like a popular chorus. And mm -hmm. I was just like, no, we're not going to do that. And that was and a good call because, it, I mean, I didn't hear it before, but it's a great song. But he went ahead and he, uh, he said, no, let's keep it heavy all the way through. Mm -hmm. And it came out awesome. I mean, the whole everything. I mean, that's... That's my favorite song on the album.
your writing process. For those of us who don't know, do you guys do is it the standard the music right, lyrics? The writing, lyrics, music. The right, everybody does their part. It's very sporadic. Yeah, everybody does their part, but the song kind of usually it just usually starts with Mark coming down saying I have a riff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The only song that didn't was uh, "Drop the Case." That's on the out. Uh, that'll be on the new album. That was a song. Uh, Grant last time. wrote with like he wrote last time too like two other bands he had I guess he had and this band's like no we don't want that mm -hmm. yeah. and, and he played it for us I was like we'll take it every great band that's what it is you know the the right combination you guys have been through a couple changes yeah. changes right and I'm sure you feel this is your strongest lineup ever right absolutely talent wise I mean we're not as cute but oh. talent wise <laughs> no, we're, missing, we're missing some nice tits and <laughs> but yeah talent wise this band's you know, I, I love the other guys. Yeah, I mean, like, everybody that's been in the band, we're, we're still pretty good friends yeah, with. Yeah. But, you know, I guess for this lineup, like, the talent and just, we get along. You know what I mean, it's not... It's kind of, everybody was, like, quick, kind of, like, quick with their parts, too. Mm -hmm. Didn't take us, like, weeks to finish a song. Like, we would go home and just all brainstorm and, like, think about shit. And it would be, like, next practice, boom. Right. Try out a handful of things and, you know, if it works, it works. We all pretty much co really collaborated with it, too. Yeah. It's like... yeah. It took me forever to write lyrics. Don't let anybody fool you. Well, forever. Yeah. But it I don't. I don't like the to, three of us. It, uh, yeah. I don't like to write bullshit though. Because there's yeah. The, art. the music may have been done for like seven months before yeah. he wrote lyrics. Yeah. Right, so you try to stay away from cliche and yeah, I, I crotch went, rock yeah. and all that kind of shit. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I went through some shit, so you also want it to sink in and get yeah. like the melodies and the harmonies and yeah, where you like, want them here out. I went through some shit, and you'll hear it. That's pretty much what the album's about, you know. But I mean, it's also I mean the album's very personal. I mean, it's not it's not breakup songs and it's not you know all girl stuff. It's yeah, you let some like in like, yeah, it, it's it's pretty it's personal. If that's one in, thing I can say um, about yeah. the album. It's it's personal, mm -hmm. and you'll hear it. And you're, some people are gonna kind of look at me and be like, "Well, what the fuck's that about?" Uh, yeah, I don't really want to explain it. Just listen. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's there for you. It's personal, but it's up for interpretation too yeah. to see how. Right. Take it how you want. Right. Yeah. You know, like there's some songs. Take your own written. story from it, right? Yeah, some songs we've written. Um, always the victim. I used to get emails all the time for our song "The Strength," and I get stuff from people talking about how that helped them get their helped them get through their mother having cancer and dying, and it'd be like, I'm glad. Everybody takes music their own way, and I think a lot of people can take some of these songs their own way. Mm. You know, like, yes, it's my story, yes, it's my hurt, yes, it's my happiness, yes, it's whatever, but, you know, anybody can take it how they want, it's music.